Good morning, Internet. I'm having an interesting morning. I stumbled into a big Mennonite area that I didn't even know existed. My people, I found more of us. I'm in high-level Alberta right now. Uh, the interesting thing is, across the river, a little ways down there, is a town called La Crete, Alberta. Way up here in northern Alberta, very close to uh, the Northwest Territory boundary. It's all full of Mennonites over there. All people of Mennonite descent. All the last names that I would expect to see in Steinbach or Winkler in Manitoba. Uh, the lady I talked to here at the UFA that I'm at, uh, I've been waiting for my permit so that I can go up to the territory. And I went in there to grab a coffee, see what was going on, and uh, I guess she heard my last name. And the last name triggered off, she says, hey, are you Mennonite? I am of Mennonite descent. Was it the beard? How did you know? She's like, no, I recognize the name. I recognize the name. Uh, she grew up in this area, and uh, it's a whole bunch of Mennonites that settled La Crete, just on the other side of the river over there, a whole bunch of them. And she started describing it, and then she brought out the phone book. They, we still use phone books in some areas. That's the phone book and showed me the, the, the last names of everybody in the area. It looked like a phone book straight out of Steinbach or Winkler. It was nothing but Friesens and Gerbrants and Weebs and Clausens and Krakers and Heberts and, and <laughs> what else is there in there? Giesbrecht, obviously. Oh man, I was wondering, why do I feel so at home here? This feels really nice. This feels really homey, like, what is it? Oh, this is my people. Another one of our settlements. What do you know? So that was my excitement for the morning. I found more of us. We're everywhere. So aside from that little exciting uh, tidbit of information that I learned this morning, I'm going to do some more research. Uh, the town's called La Crete. L-A space C-R-E-T-E, -E, which sounds like a French name. So I wonder if it started off as like a French trading post or something, and then the Mennonites came in and were like, hey, 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 wait one second. Wait one second, we're going to bring our people here. <laughs> uh, they settled there uh, a while ago, probably around the same time Steinbeck and my ancestors got to Manitoba. They came up here. I knew that there was more of us that came and settled out in Western Canada. I just didn't know we went this far north. That is so cool. So cool. Very nice area. Nice, beautiful homes and yards. They take very, very good care of their properties, which is apparently a Mennonite trait. Uh, we like to take good care of our properties and our homes, so. Huh. Other than that, though, I'm still waiting for my permit. I unloaded here already this morning. I'm waiting for my permit that will allow me to cross into Northwest Territories. I don't want to leave high level here. It's about two hours to the border. But I don't want to leave here because cell service cuts out sometime in between here and there. And if I lose cell service, I lose my ability to receive this permit. So I'm waiting here in high level. Hurry up and wait, right? But at least I get to wait with my people. So funny. The lady working in there is a penner. If you're from Steinbeck or know anything about Steinbeck, you know at least one penner. Penners are everywhere. Those people. Penner this, penner that. There's even a penner transport. You guys might have seen those trucks uh, driving around just like mine, said they're white with the blue and red stripes. Uh, the company name is Penner International. They're based out of Steinbeck. Penner is a dominant or predominant, what's the right word? Very popular last name among Mennonite communities. Uh, the people here all spoke Low German, Plautdeutsch as well, and English, just like, just like home. Just like at home. I'm, like, I'm hearing people talk around here. It's like, wait, wait. I know those sounds. I know that sounds like Blood Beach. What's going on here? Yeah, I'm a little excited. I found more of us. Permits just came through. We're good to go into Northwest Territories for the first time ever in my lifetime. I love going to new places, Diesel. You excited? You excited? Maybe we'll see some caribou or something. They're like really big cows with big horns. They're called antlers, man, antlers. Same thing. But first, before we go anywhere, gotta go visit Timmy. Now we can begin our day. 
10 for oh by yo. Alright. Pull out of my pocket. Put that up there. Put this in here. Put this down here. Move up a little closer. I like to sit really close to the steering wheel. I know some people like to hit, sit way back. I don't know. I'm weird. Coffee. Okay, I've got everything I need for the road now. It's a three hour drive up the Hay River. Let's give her. Hay River. Let's give her. I'm excited. I just passed a big sign that said, Caution, Bison on Road. I'm guessing this must be very similar to Yukon. Remember uh, the beginning of the year in wintertime when Britt and I went up to Yukon and we had all those bison all over the road, big herds of bison? I'm guessing they must be up here too if they got signs warning for them. So maybe we'll get lucky and get to see a big herd of uh, wildlife. Bison or caribou. I know they got a lot of caribou up here too. A lot of wildlife. It's just a beautiful place, you know. If I had to pick somewhere to go in Canada, uproot myself and move to, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't write off the territories. It's so natural up here, you know, untouched. Some might call it undeveloped. But that isn't always necessarily a bad thing. You still have fresh water here, flushing toilets, all the luxuries that you have anywhere else in the developed world. It's just there's so few people up here that the land itself isn't developed. It is still natural. One of the greatest things I love about Canada is how much natural wild lands we still have. You just don't find that when you go down to the States. Sure, you got some big national parks and whatnot, protected lands, I understand that, but this isn't even protected land. This is just empty. They get 23 hours of sunlight up here this time of year. And only like one hour of sunlight in the wintertime, but we won't talk about that, the forbidden season up here. It's just, what a wonderful place. We're coming up to the border. 60 Parallel Visitor Information Center. So the border here is at the 60th parallel. The Canada-US border is at the 40th parallel, right? Or the 49th parallel. 49. Right, but here it is on the sign on the right. What's it say? What's it say? 60th parallel. Welcome to the Northwest Territories. Oh, that's cool. There it is. Officially in the Northwest Territories and in a new area of Canada that I've never been before. Cool. So I saw a sign for scales. You are entering a bison control area. What? Lights on, it's the law. Okay. Possession of radar detection devices illegal. Hey, that's the same in Manitoba. Okay. Cool, well, this is the Northwest Territories. Southern part of Northwest Territories. As you go further north, the trees will get shorter and shorter until it's just barren tundra, I believe. I've never been up there, but I've seen pictures. The only thing I don't like about Northwest Territories so far is they got a real bug problem. Swarming the truck, I can't even get out. I was gonna walk diesel here, but uh, we're gonna wait till we're in Hay River and hopefully this problem is localized to around here. I noticed this in Northern Alberta already. Tons of these, like what is this, is this a horse fly? Huge buggers. If they're horse flies, they can really bite and, you know, take a chunk out of you. Just tons of them. All over the truck, swarming the truck. I think I made it worse. Watch. That really triggers them. Or maybe they like that. Maybe they like the sweetness of the bug spray on there. I don't know. This is nuts. Thanks. Everywhere. These people have had enough too. These bugs are crazy. Swarming their camper there. Wow. 
can't imagine the locals around here must know what to do to get rid of these because there's no way you can enjoy yourself or enjoy your time outside with all these horse flies or whatever these things are. Yikes. But you don't have much traffic here. Diesel, you're sleeping through all of the excitement. We're in the Northwest Territories, man. We might never be back here again. Ah, it's okay. I need a good nap. Ugh. This sun won't even set. Well, it'll set, but just for a little bit. That sounds very exciting. I'm going back to bed. Pretty cool being up here. Oh, I need to shave this thing again. I need a shower. I need to find a shower somewhere. So we're going back down to Grand Prairie, Alberta tonight, if we can get that far. We're seven and a half, almost eight hours away yet. I have nine and a half hours available to drive, so I can get there legally. It's just that it's already almost six o'clock p.m. here now. So then we'll get there in like the middle of the night. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I wanted to see how, how light it was overnight here. But I, I, I can't stay up here overnight. I've got, I've got to get going because tomorrow I've got a load that I've got to get picked up either in Grand Prairie or going to have to get down to Whitecourt or Edmonton. So I, I can't stay up here any longer. I've got to get moving. But uh, the sun at 6 o'clock in the evening is still pretty much where the sun is usually at at noon time down south for a lot of the year. It's pretty much straight in the sky over there. Ah, uh, no, it's pretty cloudy right now. It's like right up there. Before when I was unloading, I could still see it through the clouds there, but the clouds got a little thicker. But, yeah. Very interesting being up here. Feels very much like Manitoba. Just the only thing that's different is the daylight hours. Other than that, it's exactly like Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan. When I go to different places on the continent, sometimes I, I sort of have this ex expectation that it's going to be totally different. It's going to be a whole different world, you know? And then I show up there, I'm like, oh, this is exactly like home. This is just over here, and home is over there. It's exactly the same. It would be so cool to live up here for a year, just to experience the daylight hours and whatnot. Maybe just live up here for a summer. Maybe that'd be all right. All right, let's get going. We gotta go to Grand Prairie. Diesel, we gotta go to Grand Prairie. Back to Alberta. territory above us. We were in Northwest Territories. I've, I've gone south five hours already. 
I talked to the people in this area here, and apparently this time of year they get 23 hours of daylight. Or close to it anyway. Not bad, eh? I've got to clean this windshield. What's wrong with me? It's been dirty all day, hasn't it? Oh, I hate that. Then I'm editing it later and I'm just kicking myself. Oh, well, I wanted to show you the sunlight at 10 o'clock at night. It's actually 10.04 p.m. right now. Look at this. The sun is still way up in the sky. What's it doing up there? And here we are again. You, me, and the weasel. Who's always sleeping. Look at the way he's looking at me. He's like, what did you call me? <laughs> Lucky guy, I wish I could sleep the whole day. Maybe you should take a turn driving, eh, Diesel? No? Uh, okay, well, here we are. Uh, I didn't quite make it to Grand Prairie. I could have on my hours, but uh, I got tired. What do you do when you get tired? You pull it over because nothing's worth your life. And I'm, I actually don't even have to be in Grand Prairie tomorrow morning or nothing. Uh, there might be a load there for me tomorrow sometime. Uh, and it's another hour and 45 minutes from here. So by the time I get up in the morning and figure things out, the load's probably not even going to be ready yet if there is one. If there's not one, well, then I'm going to Edmonton anyway. So I, I, I stopped here at a little pullout uh, on the side of the highway. So this is like a little rest area and whatnot. I know you can't really see much, but I figured I'd try to give you a, a grasp of where I'm at here. It was actually a really long day, really long day. It was crazy. The sun was up so late. The sun is still up in here. I'm going to see if I can show you this. It is one o'clock in the morning here. Now check out the sky. We're facing south right now because we're going south. So the north is behind us. Check out the sky back there. Look at that. Can you see it? still bright it's crazy crazy just, the sun just never goes away it would be so neat living in a climate like this you know it's so neat I'm gonna go to bed now I'm I need some rest diesel I'll switch you you can come up here I'll go back there how's that sound you gonna go outside Outside? Oh, he's really tired. <laughs> so around my face here, there's gonna be links to past vlogs of mine one year ago and two years ago on this day. I will see you guys tomorrow. Ooh.